Thank you very much. Thank you, IGS. Thank you, chairpersons. You cannot stop the waves, but you can learn to surf. I'm going to speak on the topic of single incision laparoscopic cholecystectomy. I bring greetings from IMAS, Institute of Minimal Access, Metabolic and Bariatric Surgery and Robotic Surgery, Gangaram Hospital. Arthur Schopner had beautifully said that all truth passes through three stages. First, it is ridiculed, then it is violently opposed, and finally, it is accepted as self-evident. And all of us have seen in laparoscopic cholecystectomy, then single incision laparoscopic cholecystectomy also, the, this phase is going on. And Martin Luther King had beautifully said that a soft-minded man always fears change. He feels security in the status quo and he has an almost morbid fear of the new. For him, the greatest pain is a pain of a new idea. And why did we from Sir Gangaram Hospital and Bhatia Global Hospital think that we have to go, we should go in for laparoscopic single incision cholecystectomy. Only thought process was that can it be done the better way? In last uh, American College of Surgeons <coughs> at uh, Chicago, our publication was accepted and we presented on outcomes of 500 cases of single incision laparoscopic cholecystectomy in a teaching community's hospital using conventional instruments. And it was discussed and it was highly appreciated and it has been published also. But again, the thought process is once we have had got the maybe more than 600 cases now, but we are now planning to go in for robotic single site or one site cholecystectomy. Though in Gangaram Hospital, we are not favoring or we are not pushing the cholecystectomy by robot but our thought process is that one should carry on improving. Now we are doing sing the robotic sleeve gastectomies in super, super morbid obese patients. Maybe 80 BMI, 75 BMI, 90 BMI, and definitely we find a place of robotic sleeve gastectomy. So thought process is ultimately we should be able to do the robotic single incision sleeve gastectomy marching from cholecystectomy and so on so forth. As Dr. Ramesh was also asking Dr. Sena, there is a lot of evidence. I am not going into the details of it. There are many trials in which they have, it has been compared about the operative time, the complications and conversions. Definitely there is no significant difference. Cosmetic outcomes are definitely better in single incision laparoscopic cholecystectomy and post-op pain is not much significant different and incisional hernia if all of us know that when this single incision laparoscopic cholecystectomy started way back in 2007 or 6 then there were surgeons who were always opposing I, I call them as laggards that who were always opposing and they would not accept this because they will think that the chances of incisional hernia formation will be higher. But why? If we know that the incisional hernia is going to occur at an incision of around 1.5 cm intraumbilical, choose it, close it well. Why, why should we have the increased incidence of a complication which is very well known to us? So why not take a lot of precautions? Our thought process in this journey of single incision laparoscopic cholecystectomy has been that we should always think about the reduced port surgery. <laughs> if for example we are doing conventional four port cholecystectomy then one can change over two maybe three ports and then once we have graduated to two ports and one port and so on and so forth. So this incision, this surgery should not have a pressure on the head of an operating surgeon that today he has promised and he is converting himself from single in from uh, conventional cholecystectomy to single incision cholecystectomy and then cause the complications our thought process is we should definitely go step by step rather than jumping from one step to another step 
lot of literature support is there and lot of names have been given but only feeling is that <laughs> i always stress on this graph and this is a roger adoption innovation curve in which you would find that approximately 2.5% of any new technology any innovation comes there are only 2.5% are which are innovators and 13.5% are early adopters most of the people would just carry on looking whether this is a good idea or not and then they will become early adopters or late adopters the early majority or late majority and 16% would always oppose the any new change and our mindset has to change that is the thought process so if we want to convince those people those surgeons who have to go and this is the right spot this is the chance that once the innovators and the early adopters have ultimately balanced that yes this is laparoscopic cholecystectomy if it is done the single way single incision it helps the patient it definitely then different surgeons are going to adopt and that will become the majority uh, initially all of us know what was the outcome of conventional laparoscopic cholecystectomy also there are many challenges as he was also mentioning that initially when we start then lot of struggle is there outside the ports between the surgeon and the camera person lot of instrumentation cluttering is there but it is a doggedness i would say if one has a doggedness then one can graduate on to do lot of uh, advanced surgeries also for example once we have had the experience of doing single incision cholecystectomy in patients in which for example we had uh, done uh, in good five, more than 500 cases then one could do even in situs inversus also and then we once we started we started using the single incision cholecystectomy <coughs> using the sills port but we were always bothered that why should a patient spend around 28000 rupees to buy the sills port and then we go in and make a big incision for the entry of the sills port into the abdomen then we stuck initially we were standing on the left side of the patient then we shifted ourselves in between the legs and started doing it then after using all these kind of ports again the thought process was can it be done the better way but and then we started using two ports in 5 mm inside the umbilicus with the 10 mm port and these were enough for doing a cholecystectomy for the retraction but again the thought process was that we should be able to do the similar kind of dissection as we would have done in conventional laparoscopic cholecystectomy that means the critical view of safety should be very very clearly visible and that we caught hold of this mini grasper or alligator grasper and this is 2.3 cent mm that we give in the right hypochondria now we stand in between the legs the monitor is on the top and then we give a tilt to the right and the head up and then ultimately we are able to put just two ports inside the umbilicus one is a 12 mm extra long excel port which is seen in which is uh, we are using for bariatric surgery and 5 mm this is a lena port which is placed inside at around 11 o'clock position and then we place this alligator uh, grasper 2.3 mm and then we operate in excess so that ultimately we are able to make a good critical view we do not believe on bisecting the umbilicus we still believe that as we have been doing for conventional cholecystectomy give a vertical incision into the um, into the well of the umbilicus we <coughs> always say god has created the depth of the umbilicus only for us the surgeons and we should use the depth of the umbilicus as much as possible then we you we hold the fundus or near the hartman's pouch with the help of alligator grasper and then the alligator grasper is able to see the brunt feel the brunt of the liver also if it is a heavy liver then also it falls onto it and then we are able to make a critical view of safety big surgeons make big windows 
in the posterior aspect resist the temptation to go anteriorly clip it and now after graduating after doing good number of cases with 5 mm clip applier one can change to the 5 mm scope and apply a large clip applier also if the need is and then one can do either with monopolar or with harmonic but we for la as we mentioned in the last yesterday's workshop also for last 5 years i have not used any monopolar or bipolar but ultimately feeling is that we are able to complete our cholecystectomies by using the harmonic but only thing is that it has to be a judicious use of harmonic we should not cause any lateral injury to the common bile duct or any other structures there would be some situations for example if we are doing cholecystectomy please never ever think that we will be choosing only the simple cholecystectomy no but after doing good number of cases there will be some situations in which the cystic duct will be wider and if it is a cystic duct is a wider then one can place in a single instrument single hand single suture suturing inside and that can be easily learned by just rotation of the instrumentation you are you see that we pass in a vital suture and then we go in and use the rotatory movements of the instrumentation and ultimately it becomes a good surgeon's throne and then the square knot and then the square knot so that and it is just going into the loop and then tightening it and for that reason we have been able to take challenging cases also and then ultimately complete the cholecystectomy of in, in a single incision method one can see that one has to just carry on rotating the needle holder and push the instrument into it at the end of the procedure we always believe strongly on giving an excellent closure with vicryl suture now the thought process is if for example if we are able to proceed nothing like it but if the conversion has to be done it can easily be done by placing one port in the epigastric port epigastric region and then carry on proceeding it is a sign of wisdom still because we have not promised to the patient that we are going to do come what may we may injure or not but we will do single incision no our thought process is safety is main our concern and why did we go in for single incision cholecystectomy as i mentioned that we would definitely love to progress to sing we have already progressed to single incision sleeve gastectomies and then single incision colectomies and so on so forth dr sina had beautifully told that lot of progress is going on and we definitely are buying eyeing for single port robotics and in conclusion mr chairman sir i would definitely say proper patient selection in the initial phase conversion and complications are low improvement in instrumentation and tech and technology is likely to expand the role of cells in minimal excess surgery meanwhile the future is here that means the cells is here and a word of caution and that as told as from alexander pope be not the first when the new is tried nor the last to lay the old aside thank you very much for your kind attention thanks a lot thank Any you questions? it was an excellent uh, talk now we have just 10 minutes and we have two speakers i think uh, we'll take the questions later huh? now only one speaker more only so one speaker one left. speaker and 10 minutes we will no, we I, have I to go, go for an agm now so i think uh, we'll have the questions of the okay. guys sure sure thank you, thank you very much thanks uh, a lot. excellent thank you. talk very thanks nice. a lot uh, I would like to invite uh, Dr. Deepraj Bandarkar now. Uh, yeah, he's done a huge amount of uh, cell surgeries and I think he's a great guy to talk to us and tell us everything. 